Hello, welcome to Life Coaching on the Move. Welcome along. I am absolutely thrilled that you're here listening to this today. My name is Dawn Fisk, I'm your host. Um, I tell stories, I share examples, um, I walk and talk at the same time, I don't script write this, I just talk about a subject that I believe um, is important to each and every one of us. Today's subject um, I haven't covered actually in the whole of the uh, year and a bit uh, series that I've got of over 60 episodes now I have never ever discussed values and um, they are so important. So today I have addressed that and talk about our core values and how by living in alignment with our values to how much happier we can be, or if we are not living in alignment with fully with uh, our values, how out of sorts our life will feel, how discontented, dissatisfied, and an underlying unhappiness we may be suffering, and we may not know it, but it may well be because of our values. Um, And I share a story of how I was living my life without realising myself that I wasn't fully in alignment with all of my values and how that was affecting everything and how by making small tweaks and adjustments how much better everything felt. Um, uh, And I share how to do that with you. So today I think is a really, really important subject for each and every one of us. Um, and it's uh, examples, tips, techniques, and some actual activities that you can fulfill yourself and carry out for you to benefit from. So I hope you enjoy it. Just one announcement, and that is to say in August 2020, which is looming at the time of recording, I am having a summer sale on the website. So I am offering 10% off my two online programs. There's a time management online program to sort all of your efficiency and productivity and way of working out, which you can download and you then own. You can do it at your own pace in the privacy of your own home, and you can revisit as many times as you need to in the years to come. Whenever you get that, you know, you take your eye off your ball with your time management, you need a little bit of a reminder, it's there, you own it. So that's going to have 10% off the time management online program. Equally, the much longer seven module over at least seven weeks stress management program is going to have 10% off and that is a biggie in terms of how important it is as a subject matter. Stress, I do believe, um, is so vital that we get on top of our stress. It is very dangerous, it affects our health, it affects our sleep, it affects, stress can cause cancer, stress can cause heart attacks, stress stress can be a killer. And I do not make an apology for that. I firmly believe it affected my health um, massively 10, 11 years ago now and I ended up in hospital. That's why I'm so passionate about that subject. I think I was spinning every plate I could and one imploded. I couldn't keep going at that rate and I ended up in a top London hospital fighting for my life. Uh, So I am now passionate about stress and stress management um, and I believe every one of us needs to be on top of our stress and living a healthy, balanced life so that we can be much more productive, much healthier, sleep better, perform better, think clearly. Um, care for those around us, give more to those people around us because we're looking after ourselves. So that's also on offer, um, 10% off. If you're going to buy one, you might as well take the uh, opportunity of doing it in that month than when it's not on offer. So if you, if you hear this in time, then August is the summer sale month. Have a little look, www.milestone-coaching.co.uk. Failing that, let's just launch into this week's uh, episode on values. Today I'm focusing on those times where we feel perhaps we just never seem to have time to get things that matter the most done. Or we never seem to be focusing on what matters the most. We seem to be constantly focusing on everything else. Um, or and or those times when you're feeling frustrated or disappointed or annoyed with yourself all of the time. Does that ever happen to you? Um, It may be happening to you right now. So what I believe is often at the root of that is when we are not living our life 
true to what's important to us. Um, we're not living a life that's true and aligned to our innermost personal values. If we're living a life that's in line with our values, it feels right, it feels like we're wearing the right size shoe. It fits like a, a glove, <laughs> hand in a glove. That's the wrong analogy. I've got all my metaphors and analogies mixed up there. Um, but when we are living life in alignment and it feels right, then our mental health's better. Our sense of uh, sense of self, our sense of reward, our sense of happiness, our sense of calm and peace with our life is so much greater. When all of that is out of kilter and we're feeling frustrated and life just is, it seems to be a bit of a battle, it seems not to be very rewarding, it seems to be frustrating, then I believe, having worked with so many uh, clients in the past and in my own life, I believe often we're not living the life that is completely in tune with what we really value most. So it may well be that if this resonates with you a little bit or a lot, it may well be that we need to make a little tweak or you need to make a little tweak in your life so that you're living more in alignment with what's important to you. Um, the more we know about ourselves and the more we know about our own uh, values, our core values, um, then we can live a more satisfying and fulfilling life because we can make decisions that are um, based on what's important to us. We can make career decisions in alignment with what is a core value. Uh, we can make personal decisions in alignment with our core values. If we know ourselves well, if we know what's really, really important to us, then it makes all of our decisions so much easier. Um, so it is worth exploring this. It's really, really worth doing this uh, activity or the, these exercises or spending some time working out what's really, really important to you. Now, there are loads and loads of values out there. Uh, loads of possible core values. You only have to go on the internet um, and Google core values list or core values exercises and a whole list of hundreds of words all alphabetically laid out from acceptance, accountability, accuracy, adaptability, alertness, etc. On the A's, abundance, um, adventure, ambition, appreciation in the A's, there's hundreds of them, all the way through to W and Z. Uh, wealth, well-being, wisdom, warmth, zeal, uh, wonder, vitality, all of those at the end of the alphabet and hundreds in between. So, so there is a whole host of possible core values out there that, and, and many of us will have many of them. But what we need to work out is what are the overriding ones? And I always think with working with clients, it's best to focus on what are our top core values. What are the ones that we wouldn't give up, even if we were offered a million pounds? What wouldn't you give up? Um, so, I mean, most of us believe in generosity and professionalism, some risk taking, um, some some popularity, we want to be popular or we want um, to feel proactive or we want to what other, um, list, looking at a list here, um, we want enthusiasm in our life, we want freedom in our life, fun in our life, you can tell that I'm on the F's, <laughs> or we want cheerfulness and charity and challenge on the C's and though, though we all want many of these. But what are our, key? we've all got five to eight overriding key core values that are absolutely at the core of who we are. Um, what do I mean then by values and core values? Let's just define those first. It's true to say that values are the things that are our core essence. They're specifically uh, our innermost truth. They're what's really, really important to us. Um, they are your personal ethics. They're your standards. They're your principles. They're your philosophies, your ideals, your morals. They help um, 
they're, they're deep within us and they help guide us. So they help guide our thoughts, they help guide our feelings, they help guide our actions. They're, I suppose what I'm trying to say is they're a little bit like having an internal compass. They guide us in terms of what's right and what's very wrong. Um, and they guide the way we can live a most authentic life, authentic to ourselves, authentic, it feels right, it's the right fit, um, we're aligned. So if we feel out of alignment, if you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling out of kilter, if you you feel lost, unhappy, and, and, and in particular, a really low sense of satisfaction generally in life, um, and how, how life feels for you right now, then it's highly likely that you're living a life that's out of alignment um, with your true values. Um, maybe you don't know what your true values are. You haven't got the full knowledge of what is really important to you. Maybe you've not consciously spent time really, really mindfully, consciously thinking about what is your overriding innermost compass, uh, those values, those things that are non-negotiable in your life. Um, those, those philosophies that are non-negotiable for you, the ideals that you are aiming for, um, the principles that are key, your ethics, your standards, that sort of thing. Um, and, and once you've worked out what those are, those top three or those top five to eight, then you know how to live your life what to aim for, what to make sure is part of your life, where to invest your time and your passions, um, how to plan your week, your month, your year, your career, everything, your actions around those so that you're totally aligned. Um, people, I think it's true to say that maybe they've got low mental, you know, they've got mental health problems challenges at the moment or they're feeling low or they're feeling unhappy and dissatisfied they usually there's a, an, an element of them not living true to those ideals uh, because anxieties come in depressions come in it's a bit of a chicken and egg what came first really so it's worth your while investing time on thinking about and trying to come up with your core values. Now you can either do that by Googling a core values list and printing one off uh, like the one I've got in front of me now. And one way of doing it is would be for me to sit here now with a highlighting pen, for example, and work through the whole alphabetical list. I mean, there are so many, I don't know how many there are on this list. I should have, there are a good 60, 70 values and there'll be more there'll be more that aren't on this list that, that might be yours. So one activity that I could do now or might do with a client would be to sit with this list and highlight those that really resonate with me or that person that I'm working with, um, that really speak to them, jump out as, yeah, 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 that's me. Um, for example, I'm looking at the word boldness. That doesn't really stand out for me. Um, alertness, that doesn't really stand out for me. Accuracy, that doesn't really stand out for me. So I would either cross those out, I could work with this by crossing out the ones that don't really speak to me, um, or I could use a highlighter pen for those that really shout out at me. Um, I mean, there are loads on here that really shout out for me, um, but I would then need to reduce them down. So the trustworthy, that shouts out for me. Um, health, that's a massive one. I've talked about this before and you probably get that from me. If you've been listening to these podcasts, there's always an element of health running through it. I talk about being out in the woods with my dogs. I talk about running a lot. I talk about um, looking after ourselves, both in terms of fitness, well-being, stress management is a massive passion of mine, as you know. Um, getting outside and getting fresh air and vitamin D is a massive passion of mine, getting lots of plenty of rest and um, recuperation, um, eating well. And of course, the overriding one of all of them that I talk about most is having good um, 
mindset, a healthy mind, a healthy mindset, because I think that's underlying everything that we do or don't do. It does decide whether we're confident. It helps our confidence, helps our goals. It helps our sense of achievement, our mental health. It actually, having a good mindset will empower us to go out and look after ourselves physically and go and do some exercise or take part in a team sport or, or eat well. Uh, it's all about the mindset. So uh, you know from previous episodes that I talk about really good healthy mindsets. So for me, on this list, health in so many ways, mental health um, and physical health is a huge one for me. So I would definitely highlight that. Uh, for example, whereas originality, um, persistence, playfulness, of course, they're all, they're all important. They speak to me, but they wouldn't be at the top of my list, but they might be at the top of your list. So I would recommend definitely doing this. Either print off a, a list of core values from the internet and work through it in the way that I have, or another way you can do it um, is to literally get your book, the book that I've mentioned to you in the past, I know I keep saying this, but have a dedicated book to your personal development. Um, you can call it a journal if you want to call it a journal. You can call it a diary if you want to. You can call it your working tool, um, your personal book, whatever you want. But that book that I've mentioned you get, purchase a beautiful book that's dedicated to this. Open up a clear couple of pages and literally do a brain dump of all the things that make you tick, the things that are non-negotiable for you in your life. Um, just, just brainstorm, write them all down. Um, because I think you've got to get them all out and then you can start sifting it down in terms of what are the key ones, what are the priorities. So to do that, get a blank piece of paper and I want you to literally think about what makes you happy, what inspires you, what motivates you. For example, is it freedom? Is it kindness? Is it security? Uh, is it success, i.e. It's a certain element of achievement and success, accomplishment, those sorts of things. Um, so literally brain dump everything that you can think of that makes you happy, that inspires you and motivates you. Um, and, and then when you've got that, is it knowledge, is it career, is it what, whatever comes to mind, don't judge it, don't overthink it either. Just let it all flow out of you, really. What is really, really important to you in your life? So jot all of that down. Um, it's then time, once you've done that, or you've highlighted all of your, the key words on your list, it's then time to sort of select them down to five or eight values. Um, you can maybe transfer those to a new sheet uh, take your time, read them, reread them, um, and you need to determine how important each of them are. Do they really resonate you? Are they really non-negotiable? Would you, the question actually, one great question to get put to yourself is, would you give it up if you were paid a million pounds, for example? Um, so if it's career, would you give that up? That, your career up if you were paid a million pounds? And if the answer is yes, it's not a core value. Um, so if one core value for you is family um, or, or your friends or your connections, would you give them up if you were offered a million pounds? If the answer is no, then that stands to reason that's one of your core values. So that's a great question to run past yourself with all of those five to eight that you've you've whistled them down to five to eight. You can now start really finding out which ones are non-negotiable. And, and then also take some time to define them for you because you may have put the word fun. So if I were working with a client and they've put fun down or freedom or some, anything actually, I'd be interested in getting them to define that because that, uh, say the word fun or the word freedom or many other words on this list can be very personal to you. My, my fun can be very, very different to your fun. 
So define it. What does it actually mean? If fun is a key value for you, what does that actually entail for you? Because you're much more likely to live a life aligned with that value if you totally know what that means. So it's really, really um, useful to sit down um, and see if it's super important, see if it's non-negotiable, see if you would give it up or not, um, and see what it truly, truly means to you. Define it. Um, so this activity, all of these activities actually take time. So do this when you've got time like to sh don't rush it is basically what I'm saying don't rush this when you're on a five minute tube uh, trip in a minute on your commute and think well I'll just quickly do this now D do spend time on it so a longer train journey or time in the evening uh, or in the bath when you've got a nice relaxing bath and you've got your notebook or in bed or something like that when you can really really take time to do it or do it over a period of time and just have that notebook close and just open your mind up to it and see what happens but it really is worthwhile doing um, and then sort of rank them I want you to rank which is the most important focusing on each word and see which resonates with you the most um, there'll be some that naturally feel more powerful to you than others so um, I had a look at mine uh, mine are actually all quite intertwined um, family and friends were I, I combined those. Some people keep them separately, but I actually combined them because my close friends feel like family anyway. Um, so I've put them together and then non-negotiable. Of course, I wouldn't give those up whether I was paid 10 million pounds. Um, and health and well-being, although on the list they're separated, but I've actually put them together because I think they are, for me in my life, the way I define them, they are combined. My health and well-being and those are the kids and my husband and stuff, they're, they're, they're very intertwined. Um, and growth, I've got growth. I always love to be expanding my mind or growing or, uh, or whatever, but I've combined that with study as well because I think the two things go together. Growth is learning things, new things, reading around new things, listening to talks on new things, listening to interviews of other people and their thoughts, or even sitting with friends and having a bit of a debate. I just believe that's growth and study because you're, you're open to new things, new ideas, new opinions. Um, I think that's quite intertwined. So some people might separate those out, but I feel, feel for me, even learning from clients, learning from other coaches, other business owners, all, all of that. So it's all about a massive amount of topics, but it is constantly about me wanting to learn more, wanting to grow more. Not, not because I wanna be top of the game or, or phenomenally hugely successful or famous or anything like that it's not it's just this value that I've got to be always just learning it's not with an end goal in mind it's just to always feel I'm feeding my brain with new things and it's not stagnant um, and it thrives and it enjoys it and I, I love learning new things I love mulling new things over and chatting about them on a dog walk or expanding on them or exploring them further and questioning them that's a big value for me it may well not be for you or not one of your top eight anyway um, so by finding out what our values are we can then much more easily uh, make decisions because if I know what my core values are the other ones in there are caring and optimism um, you've probably picked up from the podcast I've got this perhaps naive <laughs> perhaps foolish um, long-standing optimism and I will always try and find the good out of a bad situation I will always believe there is some something to look forward to or some good in all of this so it's always uh, even if I get down at some points usually not for very long um, and I usually come out the other side very optimistic that it's happening for a reason or there's something I can learn from it or some good will come of it etc so that optimism uh, and the need to be caring, whether that's for family and friends or whether it's for the community or for you 
listeners or for um, one-to-one clients or for delegates in a workshop or whatever. Um, And I suspect as a result of those values that are in there for me, I suspect that's why I've gone into the line of work that I've gone into. I may not originally 20 years ago, 17, 18 years ago, have been mindful of that, but I think I am now in a career doing what I need to be doing, doing what I love most because it's in line with my values. If however I were on a, I were working in a factory where I just had to do my task, I had a very straightforward task, I just had to repeat, repeat, repeat and there was no opportunity for growth and there was no opportunity for me to care for anybody around me, it was a very isolated job just bolting on screws and you didn't have teamwork and things like that so there was no opportunity for me to be optimistic because I just had this, I couldn't grow, I couldn't care for others. Um, I couldn't take care health-wise, you know, uh, I couldn't stretch and walk around, go outside because I had to stay in this factory, in this spot, and not move around and very rigid and very rigid rules. I would be really, really unhappy um, because all my core values would be suppressed and uh, squashed. None of them would be being fulfilled through that line of work, for example. Um, so if you're unhappy in your in your role, in your in the job that you're in, it may well be because you've got core values that you're not able to express and live authentically with. So if one of your key values is teamwork, for example, you love being part of a team, you may fulfill that in your private life because you're part of a five-side football team or something. But at work, you may work totally by yourself. You may be out on the road as a salesperson by yourself. And that's why it might not feel right for you, for example. Um, So this comes into play, I think, when we're feeling frustrated, disappointed, unhappy, unsettled, um, we're struggling, there's negativity. It may well be at the root of it are our core values. Um, I had one client who was, she had done a series of careers Uh, She'd done okay in all of them, but she'd never really felt fulfilled in her career, ever. And she came to me for career coaching and she wanted to change again and she didn't know whether to retrain. She was very, very clever, very intelligent, very well um, qualified, but she, she wasn't feeling it in the line of work that she was doing. And she was coming with Uh, to the coaching to really try and mull over and decide whether she should do some further training and slightly diversify and I asked her what do you what what really really excites you what are your passions and one of the questions I often ask when I'm career coaching and someone's at a crossroads and they're not sure which direction to go in and they feel unfulfilled one of the questions I often ask is what did you always say you wanted to be when you were a child and or what did you used to play when you were a child? How did you fill your day as a child stroke early teens? Um, So for example, um, it's funny, when I look back, my sister and I were very, very close in age and um, in in terms of times and time together because we were brought up on a farm. My mum couldn't drive. We were on a farm away from the village. We were quite a long way from the village. So when we were sort of five, six, seven, she couldn't get us to lots of activities. My mum couldn't get us to lots of um, activities and hobbies and things like that, like children do these days. So we basically, my sister and I were very self-contained together playing all the time on the farm. We had a great childhood. We'd be building dens, mud pies out in the puddles outside and inside um, and great imaginations and we of course two girls uh, rightly or wrongly we had various teddy bears various dollies and things like that now when I played dolls which, uh, which was very not very often the way I played with my dolls and teddies, I would sit them in rows and I was a teacher or a, um, a trainer. I would be stood in front of them, all the dollies and the teddies were lined up, thinking back now. And I had a little wooden green desk that my dad had found somewhere, it was second hand, very second hand. I don't know if he'd been given it. Um, but we didn't have a great deal of money um, because there were four children. So he'd bought this second hand desk home once, uh, sort of a school desk. 
and I had that as my desk as the teacher and I had a little um, a little chalkboard on a stand as well so I used to chalk up sums and I used to write them in little bits of paper in front of the dolls and dollies and I was basically the teacher and I would mark their work and I would hand it out and that's how I played as a child looking back and I always wanted to be a teacher or a trainer and of course in a sense that's what I did I became a sales trainer and would run workshops and still run workshops now and in fact work in schools with teenagers now on their confidence in groups 15 year olds 14 year olds that sort of thing so in, in so many ways I have fulfilled that my sister on the other hand when she used to play with the dolls and teddies we also had two little wooden um, dolls cots on legs and she used to stack them on top of each other the two cots so that they were bunk beds or looked like bunk beds and we had a little pram and she'd have that there she basically made it a kind of hospital and she'd mix up talcum powder into a paste and that would be treatment and she had um, various bits of cloth that she would use as um, bandages and she'd bandage them and she'd get old plasters and, and pinch the plasters out of the cupboard and uh, she would play nurses she would basically nurse them and so for her and of course she went into the caring profession she uh, worked in um all sorts of different caring roles actually predominantly um, with um, hand, uh, handicapped and disabled adults she worked with she worked in old people's homes uh, she's done various caring roles in her careers uh, career choices so that's how she so if anybody could have watched us as children the signs were already there so I often say to uh, people in career coaching what did you use to play as a child or what did you used to say you wanted to be? Um, and when I asked this particular client, what did you used to do and how did you busy and fulfill your time when you were growing up, as I say, and she said, I used to write. I desperately wanted to be a writer. I used to write silly things and I'd sit there, I'd always have a pen and paper in my hand and I'd just sit in my bedroom um, by myself uh, for hours writing. And I said to her, and what? did you ever consider that as a career and she said oh yeah that's what I wanted to do I desperately wanted to write but my parents uh, were firmly against it and said you don't make any money as a writer and so her parents beliefs or her parents values had been a huge influence on her and in a sense she had squashed her, home, her own wishes, her own beliefs and her own core values because for her a value was expressing herself through the written word. Um, she just loved, she loved writing and I said to her, how about you just do that now alongside a career? You, you start to write now for yourself and you write maybe small articles or maybe some short stories or something and she, she then confess to well I have got some things written I do sometimes still do it because she had such an innate need in her that she'd been doing them but just putting them in a file or folder or something on the computer and I said well can you do something with it anyway long story short when we worked on this quite a lot about six weeks after we finished the career coaching um, and she had agreed she was going to also pursue her writing about six weeks later she sent me an email really really lovely email a really excited email saying she'd won a competition and um, her first piece of work was going to be published so there you are it was in her all the time uh, but she was denying it and living it and, and I do believe that's why she constantly felt dissatisfied with every single job she'd done even though she'd done okay with them all she's very capable very able she'd never really got the passion um, in any of those roles she never truly loved them because at the boss underneath it all she desperately her true one of her values was to express herself through the written word that was where her passion was so does this resonate with you is there anything that, that you have felt just there's always been this constant dissatisfaction um, or unease or unhappiness 
and it may well be that you need to tweak your decisions as a result because if we can make our decisions in um, in alignment with our values they're very easy decisions to make so the next step um, once we have worked out what our values are and we've kind of ranked them we found out what the 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 question to sometimes you can ask if I had to give one of these up off my list of five to eight what could I give up if I had to just give it away um, it's hard I tried doing this myself and actually I couldn't give any of them up so I'm only tentatively suggesting you do this I couldn't do it because I couldn't give my family and friends up I also couldn't give my health and well-being up I also couldn't give that need that I've got to be really caring whether it's the neighbor or wh whoever it is um, and I couldn't give up the need for me to be constantly growing and learning an open mind, nor could I ever not be optimistic. <laughs> so I decided I couldn't give any of them up. Um, so see how you get on with that part. But the last part um, is to then ask yourself the question in terms for you going forward and living a life where you're truly aligned to your values is action planning really ask yourself a couple of questions if um, the, the how do I word this I would say let's say I'm looking at my value of family and friends so look at each value separately and ask yourself these questions if I were living in true alignment with my value of family and friends what would I be doing in this next week say and for the next month and therefore for the next year and the future so but on a daily basis or for the next week within the next week if I were putting family and friends value at the top of my list what would I be doing so that I know I'm living in alignment with that what would I be doing and then what would I be saying what would I be feeling and wh where would I be so when I did this, I did this once in a workshop. I was the delegate in a workshop um, a long, long time ago, and it has stayed with me since. And I realized at the time I wasn't fully living this value because I was busy doing, I, had, I was working, I had a freelance contract at the time, plus running my business at the time, plus running the home um, and a marriage and, and the kids in particular, I was having to rush. I was rushing them off to school, then I'd rush off to my job, then I'd rush back, get dinner ready, and then they were younger. And, and I had to confess to myself that I was actually, in order to keep sane, I was getting them to bed as early as I could, so that then I could sit down and do some more work in my coaching business on top of that. So I was exhausted, tired, getting them to bed early. And I, I realized when I did this that I wasn't actually spending quality time with them. I was being functional. I was, uh, I was doing what needed to be done. I was eating with the with the children and with Neil, but I wasn't spending quality time with them. And by doing this activity, I realised that my core value, family and friends, was being neglected. And that's why I was feeling exhausted. I was feeling on a hamster wheel. I was feeling unhappy with it all. Didn't have a sense of achievement. And I realised through this activity that actually, if I were living in true alignment with that value. I would be having quality time and so from that I could work out okay so if I were living in true alignment what would I be doing well for the next week and this is how you can action plan now go into action mode for the next week I could have at least let's say um, I can't remember what I wrote I think I wrote on the list that I would have family time every evening before bed my youngest has this phrase he'll arrive downstairs in his pajamas ready for bed particularly when he was younger and he'd say family time and what he really meant was let's sit down on the sofa and watch uh, he had a particular program before bedtime that he used to watch I think it was about 20 minutes and I would tickle his back he loves his back being tickled under his pajamas so I would sit there rubbing his back scratching his back etc in some ways it was avoidance to go to bed a bit later no 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 let me have 20 more minutes five more minutes etc but it was quality time together it gave us a chance to ask how was school how was your friend what happened with this what happened to my oldest what happened at training or your match did you win etc 
And that, so I knew now that if I needed to address this value and spend that quality time with them, instead of me saying, you sit and watch that, I'll go and do your packed lunches for school tomorrow. And instead of me saying to Neil, oh, well, you, can, can you go and walk the dog and I'll get the kids to bed separately. We would do separate things. I realized I needed to address it. So our dog walk at the weekends, a long dog walk, would become the time that we could properly catch up and have a proper conversation. A Saturday morning cup of tea in bed became a, a lie-in and a cup of tea came our, uh, became our time of really catching up on your week. How was this? How was that? What did so and so say? Such and such and so on. So, but you can do this yourself. Work out what your key values are and then ask yourself, if I were living in true alignment with this one and this one and this one, what would I be doing? So for me, the second one was health and well-being, which I have to say again at that time, I had taken my eye off the ball because I couldn't do it all. I couldn't do the health and well-being even though I needed to. But so what I ended up doing there by asking myself my, the question, if I were living in true alignment with health and well-being, what would I be doing each week? I could start planning. And so actually at that time, um, one of the girls at the company I was working with um, wanted to do a little bit of running. So she and I started to bring in our running kits. Every lunchtime we'd go for about 35 minute run. They had showers luckily there. So we, the two of us would go for a run. We'd have a good catch up. So it was a chance to do the well-being thing and the chat and the friendship and the caring and so on. Health and um, fitness, we were running together. We'd shower and then eat um, the sandwich that we'd got from the canteen at our desk instead. So I was able to it combined that with my job and therefore not take away from my family and friendship times back at home. So I could I could turn things around just by looking at what my core values were and making some changes. Um, so it may, um, and the growth and the learning, I think that was at the time because I used to be in the car both directions a good hour every day. It was a hideous commute on the M4. You'd get stuck and park there. I started to download podcasts, audio books, learn things, interviews. So I do my learning um, in the car, listening uh, out loud um, from the stuff I downloaded. So I was, I've only really just realized all of this. I was fulfilling pretty much all of my core values by addressing it with that activity I did in that workshop. So I really, really hope this has helped you find out first what your core values are. If you can prioritize them, then do, but I don't actually believe that's that strictly necessary. It might be slightly if one is overriding or two are overriding, and of course that will help. But the key for you to do a bit of a mental health check is to find out if you're living a life that's in alignment with them, to find out if you're in a career that helps and facilitates them and brings them out for the better in you. By asking, if I'm living in total alignment with this value, this core one value, what would I be doing each week, therefore each month, therefore each year? It's just condensing it down to a snapshot to make sure you're doing it. Uh, what would I be doing? What would I be saying? How would I be living my life? And if you're not, then that gives you a chance to tweak things and make some changes. And often they're just small changes, such as me spending 20 minutes, half an hour with the children, uh, a good 40 minute lie in with my husband and then a long dog walk. And for example, and the run at work three times a week and the downloading audiobooks. I addressed all of it with some small changes, but actually life didn't have to massively change. I just had to make a few adaptions. And I hope that that's exactly what will come out of this for you. Um, even if it's not drastic changes, and if it's not that you're out, it, it may be that you feel okay about your life right now, but have a little look and it may be that one value, one value isn't being addressed enough, or if it were addressed more, you'd feel even happier. So don't dismiss this totally. It's an activity I would genuinely say is worthwhile doing, no matter how you're feeling in life at the moment. It's just a quick litmus test to see if you're on track. And as I've always said, all of us can all make some small improvements in our lives to find greater, um, greater happiness, greater just overall sense of satisfaction with how we're living with things. It may well be that it's felt okay 
but there's room a tiny bit of improvement for you so i truly truly hope that's been helpful for you it was for me and i thought it worth sharing because actually on this podcast i don't think i've addressed values at all and it is key it's key in my one-to-one coaching it's key in even career coaching and decision making mental health it's it's key in every area so drop me a line share your experience share your your learnings that you've got from this because i love hearing from you all love it um dawn at milestone hyphen coaching dot co dot uk if there's a particular subject you'd like covered then drop me a request and i'll do my best if i can um also just wanted to end with that little announcement that we at the time of recording are now almost mid july 2020 Um, and so therefore we are approaching august depending on when you're listening to this i am having an august summer sale Um, So I'm delighted to say that from the 1st of August for a month on my website, the online programs that I've got, there's one on time management and there's um, a much longer in-depth seven week modular course on stress management, such a biggie, so crucial to get on top of our stress because of our health, our sleep, our well-being, our productivity, our, our performance, everything can suffer if we're not managing our stress and everything can benefit if we do manage our stress it's just so so our health uh, stress kills that's the bottom line it really can um, be so dangerous so i have dedicated a seven module course to stress management because it is so important both of those online programs have got 10 percent off in august So it may be a time when you've got lots of time on your hands to do some learning because um, not many of us are necessarily going on the holidays we first thought we would this year. Um, So do some personal development, some personal growth, get on top of either your time management and or your stress, ready for September, um, back to work in a really, really effective, productive, focused way and um, take the opportunity of getting a little bit of of money off in August. So go on the website and find that out. It's www.milestone-coaching.co.uk or tell a friend or or colleague about it if you feel they're suffering and they could benefit. You might as well. Who doesn't like some money off? That's what I say. So might as well do it in August rather than now or September. Take care, everybody. Have a really, really good day healthy happy and confident week and i'm looking forward to talking to you on next week's episode of life coaching on the move Mm -hmm.